Hey, that movie didn't have nearly as many twists as middle school. <laughs> no, there were <laughs> there were ghosts in this movie though. Um, as you could tell, this is going to be the fun review. Uh -huh. <laughs> look, I cut. Look, look, look. We got a really checkered past. All right. <laughs> Come to America, see its proud history. <laughs> oh. Or just watch Coming to America with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we just got out of Birth of a Nation. No, The Birth of a Nation. The Birth of a Nation. Two very different movies here. <laughs> when I was talking to my girlfriend earlier, she thought we were going to see a re-release of yeah. D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation. Like... That's true, babe. We're going to be at the theater for like three and a half hours. <laughs> That's a long, silent film. <laughs> well, this was a hard sit, and I knew it was going to be a hard sit when mm -hmm. I went into this movie, but it was mm -hmm. a hard sit for an entirely for entirely different reasons than I expected, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I might have liked this movie a little better than you did, even mm -hmm. though I have problems with it. <laughs> yeah. It's been interesting watching this movie and how it's developed, because this was... this. You know the the word of mouth building around this movie started all around yeah. it can, mm -hmm. and you can understand why the word of mouth had built around it because yeah. here here is this black filmmaker with his very first film, r written, produced, starring, starring, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and you know he's reclaiming the title of a movie that's infamously a propaganda piece for the KKK. We're taking that title back. Yeah. I can't wait till he makes Triumph of the yeah. Will. <laughs> and telling a story of a historical figure yeah. that has been previously been not very well, you know, sort of, you know, very well depicted in history. It's mm. been, a, been a figure that's been in many cases sidelined especially you can tell that especially in the source of um in the epilogue that they uh, at the end of the movie where they yeah. note that he that that was everything that happened yeah, to his body dismembered yeah. and used for grace yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all in the hopes of preventing a legacy and the movie is yeah. really trying to prevent that and here's the thing i get that with the movie it is it, you can tell it's this really well-intentioned really absolutely you know, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really wants to be this powerful piece. And uh -huh. of course, the narrative surrounding the movie has been very much changed <laughs> because of the yeah. uh, what has come to light after the movie was bought by Fox Searchlight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see how the movie does. Uh, mm. That whole controversy involving Nate Parker and the uh, co-writer of this film, Yeah, I... It didn't affect how I watched the movie no, because I mean, look, it's it's not the first time I've watched and reviewed a movie that's done by a person who's possibly mm -hmm. pretty morally reprehensible. Yeah, um, and it won't be the last time no. either. <laughs> I mean, so that, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that I, didn't I bother to, me going into that, this. That movie. didn't bother me really going into the movie. I mean, I was aware of it, and there, yeah. there is a there is some things with the movie that, that to do that to do with that. But mm -hmm. to be honest, that really wasn't shaping my opinion of the movie. I was very much going into this. You know, as, as mm -hmm. it was very much intended to be seen, very much as a movie yeah. by itself. If I can objectively review a Victor Salva film, <laughs> I can sit through Birth of a Nation. Yeah, because <laughs> my problems with the movie aren't to do with the fact that the guy that made this is an acquitted rapist. That has nothing uh -huh. to do with my qualms with the movie. Yeah. My qualms with the movie, I think, come down to a lot of the fact that. It's a movie that has a first-time director, and last night we watched Girl on the Train and we compared it to Gone Girl. Yeah. You know, because the comparison is unavoidable. Here, it's very much unavoidable that you, in, in your head, you compared this to 12 Years of Slave. No, you're absolutely right. And during the movie, uh, of course that is, it's not that yeah. old of a movie. Visually speaking, mm. they look rather similar, like similar yeah. tones and everything, mm. or put similar, it, like, Fox cinematography. Well. Exactly. And 12 years, is, there, there were times in this movie mm. where I was thinking to myself that 12 Years a Slave is a better film. Yeah. It's, it's paced better. Yeah. It's edited a lot oh, better than this movie. We have to talk about this movie's pacing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I knew we, I, I knew we were going to agree on this. Um, because this movie is like exactly two hours long, which yeah. when I see something that's exactly two hours long, I instantly get suspicious that mm. this has been edited down to get yeah. in more more show times throughout the day. Mm. 
you can kind of tell in a lot of scenes in this movie. You can kind of tell that it's a, it's a movie that at one point might have been longer, but I think that's also just simply due to the way it's been structured. Because mm -hmm. the first act, I had major reservations with the first act of this movie in particular, mm -hmm. because... You know, the movie is about this revolution. Yeah. And but really it, it kind of isn't for the most part. For the most part, it ends up being this biopic movie when really it shouldn't be. It really yeah. should have more of a focus on the revolution. Exactly. What yeah. what would you say? The revolution revolution is maybe twenty minutes of this movie. It's maybe twenty minutes in the final act of the film. Yeah. And for the most part, it's more biopic fodder and really awkwardly paced biopic fodder that at times feels like you're reading the Wikipedia synopsis <laughs> of a person's page. Because it, well. it, it, jumps, it jumps years mm. in edits. Yeah. Because it, it, it goes through all of uh, the events in Nat's life. Yeah. But it happens in such a quick succession and it sort of goes along for the first 40 minutes of the movie like this. Yeah. Because it starts out with him as a kid, and then it transitions into him as a young adult, mm -hmm. and then he 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 essentially buys his wife, essentially. Yeah. And then the, and she's he, it moves into him going into becoming a preacher, and then she, she says that well we're having a kid, and then in the next cut the kid is maybe you know maybe about four years old at that I, point. Is <laughs> that kind of pacing? I wasn't so much having a problem with that. I wasn't so I because mm -hmm. okay like that. Cutting from his wife saying she's pregnant and then mm. she has a kid. Like, okay, I, I know how much time has passed right now yeah. because of the fact she's given birth and how old the kid looks. The editing I had a problem with in this movie is, okay, for instance, there's a gun battle in this movie that oh, yeah, yeah. has no ending. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a gun battle at night with Jackie Earl and his guys versus Nat Turner and Nat Turner's oh, that, people. that bothered me as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. like... It just ends. Yeah. Like, it cuts to the... I thought it was cutting to a flashback mm. because suddenly there's this gun battle where they're trading bullets, like, yeah. two different sides, and then all of a sudden it's the next day. Yeah, and, and, sudden, and suddenly there's thousands of them there. It's, it's uh -huh. really confusing the air to, like that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if it, Jackie Earl and his men were dead and yeah. it was going to pan back and maybe Jackie Earl and his guys have been hung. Like... Mm -hmm. No, like, because Jackie Earl shows up in the final battle there yeah. at the end, but it, there is weird editing like that in this film. It, it's all... The, the stuff that you mentioned is all in the stuff to do with the revolution, mm -hmm. and it, again, it it makes me think, if there was a movie that was properly about this, rather than it seeming... All, I hate to say it seems almost like an afterthought, but it doesn't feel like it's supposed like it's the focus of the movie like it really could have been. The movie's structured like a revenge film. Yeah. Like it is. It, it it's structured like mm -hmm. we spend a majority of the movie seeing all these atrocities that he's witnessing, yeah. all the things that are happening to him, to his wife, and then the last act of the movie is like it, like a revenge film. Yeah. That's that's they, that's they, the last act of the movie. They rise up and kill their masters. Yeah. But th the editing in those sequences, they mm. definitely it, it definitely said we ran out of budget. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, because if this movie was I honestly thought that like the revolution was going to be maybe halfway into this movie and yeah, then it was I thought, I thought really going to I thought that was really going to be the empirical focus yeah. of the movie. You and can it really isn't. No, it's not. Like and you can get into some really interesting issues there if if, yeah. the, if the movie focused on that a lot more because um mm. and correct me if i'm wrong uh, because i it it's been a while since i've been in history class but you really could have gotten deep into the fact that during this uprising yeah. there were women and children on both sides that were yeah. that were killed you really could have gotten into this like mm. moral area between you know, they've witnessed all this. They're rightfully uprising yeah. against these people, rightfully so. Yeah. Like, believe me, like, when he gets his revenge on Jackie Earl, it's like a, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. like, when the guy gets his head chopped off and stuff like that. But you really could have sunk your teeth into this material mm. and really showed yeah. some pretty dark shit. It, it feels like there wasn't nearly enough time devoted to the mm. actual revolution at the end of the movie because, like you said, there's a lot of things that are historically known yeah. that have very much either glanced over or completely omitted and it's both a problem for the movie in the fact that it 
again, it doesn't feel like it has nearly enough, enough depth in that particular section, mm -hmm. but also because it it kind of lets, you know, it kind of lets Nat off the hook a little bit when there could have been a lot more sort of interesting dialogue about the sort of ethics mm -hmm. of this, because it's clearly, a, it's part of this is clearly a religiously based revolution. It's yeah. clearly... You know, he he's seen that in what religion can do, how religion can both empower people, but yeah. also can can be used to keep mm. people in bondage, essentially. Yeah. And he and he tries to use essentially religion, their weapon of they use religion as as a kind of weapon in a certain yeah. sense. To try he says, and, "I am wrath." Yeah, mm -hmm. just like John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's the better Nat Turner movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he but he turns that he turns that essentially against the mm. slave owners. And here's the thing that I had with this movie is that it's clearly from a first time director. You and, really feel yeah. the auteurism in this film. Absolutely. This is the kind of movie where you can tell that it has a you can tell that it has a sense of its own self-importance. Yeah, and, yeah. And it doesn't benefit the movie because it makes the it feels a, it feels slightly sanctimonious in some areas, but it just you mean like when he sees an angel at the end of the oh, film? The symbolism in this movie. It's the, the, I, this is, I took you to the best possible movie to this, see why you're here. This, this, is, <laughs> this is the symbolism. If you of the had movie. stood up yeah. and shouted that in the middle of this film, <laughs> oh man, the, the, thought, <laughs> the thought had crossed my mind. Because <laughs> man, oh man, this was this was symbolism. Yeah. One oh one and yeah. it, at times it was re it was in it was almost a little bit embarrassing because it's, it was it was cu weird cutaway uh -huh. shots that had nothing to do virtually it, with the scenes that no, they were in. Not at all. It got weird. Like not only is it really stereotypically auteurish, but yeah. it was like, am I? S did someone sit on the remote and I'm watching an episode of Hannibal all of a sudden? It's like, like it's like that first scene in Lucy where it where it cuts to stock naked yes! footage. Yeah, <laughs> with yeah, exactly like it, his wife gets attacked and the scene's playing out and then suddenly we cut to this insert short mm -hmm. shot of corn bleeding. This ear of corn that's bleeding and. There's one part where uh, Nat Turner standing with kid Nat Turner, and he's doused in like this it, it, white war it, yeah, paint. It, it, it's connected to the sort of tribalism that was at yeah. the start of the movie. Uh -huh. But again, it's something that re that doesn't feel like it has a place in the movie. As well, yeah, and he's of. It looks like he's avoiding Emperor Palpatine hiding in the woods, like because this big cloaked, yeah. dark cloaked figure turns his head around. The, the very first instance of symbolism. I, I'm really annoyed because I can't remember off the top of my off my head, but it really annoyed me because because uh -huh. it felt so jarring, and then it kept happening. The the vision, quite a bit. The visions of his wife as an angel that ha yeah. that happened when he was getting whipped, and then it happens again at the end of the movie when he mm -hmm. when he's getting hung and the movie could lose all oh, of Oh sorry that. hanged hanged quite pedantic <laughs> <laughs> Someone paused the video to to type that in there you um, you you uh you hung a picture on I the say, you hang a person <laughs> I say hanged all the time yeah um or hung yeah. or which whichever one is the wrong one I say don't, all don't the worry time. I'm sure someone will correct us. oh they do <laughs> and I'm always like dude wonder what I meant <laughs> but the the moment where he kills um Army Hammer in the movie mm -hmm. again that that is a real kind of symbolism moment because they're backlit against this giant stained glass yeah. cross and again it really takes away some of the ethics of that particular moment mm -hmm. because the, the framing of the cross in that moment makes it look like a very righteous kind of thing when mm -hmm. really army Ham hammer's character was more of an ambiguous figure because he starts off sort of army like, hammer has the best arc in this movie yeah like Ar by far army hammer is the kind of actor that he really is more of a character actor than he is a leading man. I, I really like Army Hammer. Yeah. Like he, I, he's, a, he's a good actor, but yeah. he's, I'm not sure if he's leading man material. In but the, this is the kind of role that he's... Really oh, he, he's for. great. I loved him in Man from Uncle. Mm. Um, as bad as as bad as bad uh, Lone, Lone Ranger, Ranger was, like I had no problem with, with him. Yeah. Like Honestly, as the Lord Lone Ranger, he's actually kind of a perfect actor to play that. But yeah. in this... 
he really starts out this movie as this more um not a terrible person by any means like uh it, it starts out like there's almost this sort of friendship between the two of them mm -hmm. like he kind of protects uh nate parker a bit early on in the movie and it seems like they they bond a bit uh, almost sort of like the uh um cumberbatch role in 12 years a slave yeah yeah that, that and, definitely remind me of that, yeah, yeah. And he has Army Hammer has the best is has the best arc in this film because as the movie goes on, Army Hammer himself starts seeing more and more of this sadistic, torturous shit, like the guy getting his teeth knocked yeah. out. And you can tell Army mm. Hammer's having a huge problem watching this. Like he's mm. disturbed by it. He starts drinking, and then as the movie goes on, he sort he, of ends up morphing into his father. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He starts turning into his father. He becomes much more of a hardcore alcoholic. Abusive. Really abusive. Turning a blind eye to everything. Yeah, because he starts having like problems on his farm and so it's really interesting starts seeing call, starts that. calling that boy boy yeah, yeah. uh-huh it was really that was honestly the most compelling character in the movie yeah like it, it 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 really was to see what started out as this figure that you don't dislike in the film to by the end mm. really not that much different yeah. than, than the rest of the people that they're rising up against that to me was mm. was one of the things i really liked about this movie it's why I, it, it's one of the things that, that i didn't where whereas overall I I didn't dislike this movie. Mm. Army I, I didn't dislike one. this movie. Either. I want to make this perfectly clear. I I don't think this is a bad movie by any stretch no, of the imagination. No, not this at is all. A, this is a very flawed movie. Yeah. And I have you know serious problems with the way that it's executed. Mm. But I, can un I I am sympathetic to what it's trying to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. Uh huh. No. Totally. And good things I could say about the movie is that other than Army Hammer being mm really fucking good in this. Nick Parker uh, in the lead role. Yeah. He's very solid in this. All around. Role. The acting is really solid in this movie. Yeah. And Nate Parker is really good in this film. Mm. Uh, he is a good leading man in the flick. It, the, the, the journey that his character takes is, mm -hmm. is interesting in and of itself. There's sort yeah. of this idea that he he goes around to these various these ver you know various slave houses yeah and he's he he preaches because mm -hmm. he's he he's probably luckier than many of the people that he encounters in that he, oh, he has Lord, had a yeah. he has had a semblance of an education uh -huh, he can he, read yeah he can <laughs> read he, he doesn't he go to one of them and they say oh they barely know hasn't they barely even know their own names yeah they ba barely know how to spell their own names or ba barely know their names yeah yeah he, 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 I mean even even when he he's being taught by Penelope I think that's Penelope Ann Miller at the beginning of the movie I think it is I seem to recall oh, she was in this movie yeah right? mm -hmm. even, even then there is still a feeling of segregation and separation mm -hmm. like these are all the books for the white people but here's mm -hmm. your bible yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. But he he goes around preaching and he mm. sees firsthand the con the conditions and you can see you can see him visibly uncomfortable you can see mm -hmm. how there is a serious conflict in how he feels in his own christianity and how other people use cr christianity as a justification for their own sort of barbaric actions oh it never happens nowadays <laughs> yeah <laughs> the no, movie does movie's a lot. not timely whatsoever <laughs> no no yeah the movie does do a lot of that where without outright coming out and saying it yeah. It, it it compares a lot of the things in the movie. I mean, we can we compare this to Twelve Years a Slave, but it's sort of different in some mm -hmm. respects. In that Twelve Years a Slave has a, it has a sort of element of Hitchcockian wrong man kind of narrative in yeah. that Solomon Northup. Whoa, that was that was very close to us, guy <laughs> behind us. Just run right into us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> it's Irving and Brian yelling at me because they're not seeing this movie. But it's very interesting that um. Because Twelve Years a Slave is a different kind of movie in that, uh, it, unlike Nat in in this movie, he he, he had a source. He had you know he was a respected violinist. Mm -hmm. He was a freed slave. He he managed to get himself out of that, and then of course he he'd been put into that. So there was a. There, 
All right. There was a greater <laughs> feeling of in. There was a, a palpable sense of injustice coursing through that movie. Very obviously, it's a ve- <laughs> you know. Twelve Years a Slave. Yeah, also watching it, I think I had a bit more hope. To yeah. It than watching this, like this is, is it, this is going to end gruesome. <laughs> as, as soon as you see Jackie O'Haley as a slave capture, see, you know that that's not ex- going to. That's yeah, not going to end exactly. Well. Look, that's. Mm. That was their mistake right there. You hire yeah. Jackie Earl as your slave mm. master, of course it's going to end in an uprising. <laughs> that was their big mistake back then. <laughs> but uh, he, the difference between the two movies is that the atrocities in 12 Years a Slave, you, they really linger on them. They really make you feel the impact on them. Here, the difference, I feel, in the sort of, ex- in the sort of way the film is executed is that it almost makes you feel that those things coming from Nat's perspective as someone who was who's been raised yeah. in that world mm-hmm. his father ha- his father leaves very early on cuz he he shoots one of the pe- one of the people and he ha- he never comes back again he, no he doesn't no. i'm sure he's fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> having been born and raised into this world and having mm-hmm. seen it firsthand there is a sense that of it being very common of it being almost par for the course in yeah. some sense and mm-hmm. it is very it's much more impressionistic in the same way in a, in a different way that 12 years a slave was mm-hmm. in that you know Solomon North that was an outsider yeah. whereas that's in this movie definitely isn't but even then he's still shocked by what he's No seen. yeah because like even living where he lived he didn't see someone with a metal gag over his mouth getting force fed through a yeah. tunnel and his teeth plucked uh, out yeah and what yeah, i knocked out with a hammer knocked out with a hammer and yeah. what i liked about this was is how much this movie mm. really does like you mentioned 12 years a slave kind of showcasing a lot of the violence and everything and this one i did like how a lot of the really violent material in this really kind of lingered more on the shots of the characters who were watching it, yeah, it happened was, right in front of them. Yeah, it was very much more impressionistic. The actual mm-hmm. sort of gory moments are maybe are actually very fleeting, if anything. Yeah, there's the teeth, there's the whipping scene, there's mm-hmm. the the climax. Yeah, um, but it's but the difference in the whipping scene, for example, in Twelve Years a Slave, they showed that from they show they showed the whipping scene from the perspective of. Of you know oh, that really fucking hurts. Yeah, like yeah. yeah they, they show the back being ripped apart yeah. in Twelve Years a Slave, they whereas sh- it's very much more on Nat struggling through that ordeal. It with, is. It's more him. Rema- yeah. It's more his face and him kind of remaining strong and vigilant through this. Mm-hmm. Whereas Twelve Years a Slave, you're right. It's an outsider mm-hmm. involved in this, so we so he's reacting mm-hmm. as you realistically yeah. would when getting hit in the back with a freaking whip. Yeah, <laughs> but. This comes down to the maybe it's maybe I just didn't feel it in the same in the same way because like I said, twelve years a slave. That sense of indignity and injustice courses throughout out the mm. entire movie, and yeah. it, it does here, but it's it almost feels to a lesser extent. There are t- there are too many structures in this movie that feel like they're like they're a little bit meandering. Like you said, there are pa- there are serious pacing issues with this movie. Yeah. This this is the kind of movie where it really. You you compare it to a revenge movie. In a revenge movie, there is a there is normally a sense of sort of anger bubbling up to the surface, and unfortunately, Nate Parker, in terms of his direction, uh-huh. he's a better actor than he is a director. Well, because and he here, doesn't really he doesn't really get he doesn't no. really get a building sense of tension in the movie. Well, he he does, but the thing is, mm. and it's a problem I have with some of the pacing is that in this is that it does reach a point to where it bubbles up to where. Mm. This guy's going to snap and he's going to kill these people. Yeah. But what this but an unfortunate thing this movie does is it, it does get repetitive yeah. because it does it sort of reaches a point in the movie where I thought the revolution was going to start or it was going to happen yeah. around when his wife is raped, mm. but it keeps going and then there's another bad mm. thing that happens and then we see another shot of Nate Parker mm. reacting to this and then you're like okay is is it going to start here at this yeah. like dinner party? You, you find and yourself, no, it doesn't. You find and... yourself restlessly kind of waiting for the revolution to happen because you really you, do. You're familiar with this part of the story, and I have to be honest. Like I said, I found this a really kind of stodgy watch, and I there were parts of this where I, where I was bored. To be honest, I don't I, think I was I, ever 
bored, but I, I, I was I, restless. I, just, I didn't feel wholly invested in the story yeah. in the same way that I did with Twelve Years of Slave. Same here. Twelve Years of yeah. Slave, you know, mm -hmm. it it really kept me in engrossed in the action and this movie doesn't do that that, mm. that that is the fundamental difference between the two movies to be mm. honest and <laughs> going, uh, going back to the controversy I can mm. understand why there is some controversy because when it comes to the female characters in this movie yeah. again a lot of them are there to be a lot of them are there to be abused like well, for example I mean, <laughs> I, mean, that, that, I mean that makes sense in the time period but uh -huh. For example, Nat's Nat's wife, who you know, we know that bad things are going to happen to her. Yeah. And Jackie O corners her, and he beats her, and it's pretty heavily implied that he rapes her. Oh, yeah. And obviously, with the controversy, mm -hmm. having that happen is you know a bit of a problem, especially considering that historically speaking, I'm not sure that she actually was raped. I think that was something that was invented for the film. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't know. I, I, I remember reading that might have been an invention for oh. the film. But the thing is, even with that, even if that, that, even if I'm wrong on that, that character is almost out of the rest of the movie. And that happens around 50 minutes in. Mm -hmm. she's, in she's in it a couple of scenes after that, but most of the time she's lying in bed recuperating. You, you raise a good point there, because there was a... a there was a part in the movie where she had been out of it so long I didn't know she died. Yeah. Um, th th there was. like, So I had issues with that. I, I I don't have any issues with there being a lot of abuse in this film. Yeah, it's, like, not, it's, uh, not, it's not the idea of abuse. It's more just sort of to do with that kind of character. So she, it didn't feel like she... It didn't feel like she was very fleshed out as a particular mm -hmm. character. It just... I, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. I mean, I, but I don't know how... Like I said, I, I don't know how accurate that is. To, I, I don't know if that person existed or if this this happened to that person. Mm. It was more to me the uh, problems I had there was like I said, like I I was never really bored in this film. I was always at least gripped by at the least I was gripped by the acting, mm. even some of the cinematography. Yeah, but uh, in terms of that, I, I I I was getting restless. Yeah, especially when it, it reached a point where it was sort of repetitive like how many more things are going to happen until it gets to the uprising mm. that being one of them that honestly yeah. was what i thought was gonna mm. start the it, whole it thing. feels like a movie that should be more incendiary than it really comes across on screen to some uh -huh. extent i it feels like a movie because there you know there are things that are really charged about it mm. but it, it just uh, something about it just didn't really click with me it's just mm -hmm. one of those movies where it you, you can tell it's an important movie. You can tell it's something that they that the people involved mm -hmm. in it were really passionate about, but it just yeah. didn't connect with me, and it just mm -hmm. didn't. It felt like there was a there was a better movie really struggling to come out here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I I think that if this movie went through another edit. Yeah. Like, maybe lose some of the auteur symbolism. Lose the symbolism. Um, tighten up the first act. Yeah. Make it more focused tighten on the Tighten up the first revolution. and second act. Uh, focus a lot more on that. Mm. Uh, get into some moral moral ethics and things mm. that could be Th this, really This need a rewrite and a re-edit. At least a re-edit. Like, <laughs> yeah. a, you know what? Maybe, like, maybe not necessarily a rewrite, but at least a re-edit. Because mm. there's, I can see to where there's enough great stuff on screen here that mm. another tighter edit maybe extending the revolution a bit more if they can if there was enough yeah. if, if there was like, enough like I said th th this seemed like a movie where they had a very low budget and perhaps the ec the way they had to deal mm. with that was that they had to truncate that portion of the movie but they <laughs> It they, really, it, they really should have just extended that portion of the movie out because yeah. it's exactly what you came to see. It's exactly what the audience comes to see. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the poster of the film. Yeah, it's the poster, and it and like it's so it's such a small part of the movie that it feels like this only took place within a few hours. Yeah, like it, the last it really does. The when it comes up in the epilogue saying that it's a 48 hour, mm -hmm. it was a 48 hour siege, that really doesn't come across no, in the film. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't at all. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I would say that it's, uh, at the least, I would say it, it's, mm. it's 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 worth a matinee screening. Yeah. This, this, is, this is probably a matinee or a rental at the very mm. least. I, I would like to reiterate, this isn't a movie that I hated no. by any stretch of the imagination. I, 
it's a movie that I could I could get behind to some extent, but yeah. I have I, there are too many reservations for me here to give this a mm-hmm. wholehearted recommendation. I think it's a movie that's probably worth seeing if you're interested in. Especially if you're a film fan, I think it's definitely a movie that people are going to be talking about for for the next several months, especially yeah. in the run up to the Oscars. Especially because this movie is bound to score a couple of nominations, and that's mm-hmm. bound and that is going to stir quite a few people up. Yeah. Um. You know what it sort of feels like. You ever see Top Five with Chris Rock? I I didn't get round to it, unfortunately. It, it's actually a really good movie. Yeah. But, but there's a movie that he's his character is making in yeah. the movie that he's promoting. That's like his character's first dramatic break. Yeah. And it's kind. Of, I think it's called <laughs> Uprising. And it's. <laughs> Well, they just switched out Chris Rock for Nate Parker. Well, it, t- it turns out we're living in the reality of top five because that's how Boo and Medea yeah, Halloween happened. That was, yeah, because Boo and Medea Halloween, which in top five was called like Medea's Haunted House, is yeah. the movie that was like beating Chris Rock's movie at the box office in that yeah. film. And the tagline was like, she ain't afraid of no ghosts. And apparently the story behind that is that Lionsgate saw top five and went to Tyler Perry. Hey, how come you didn't do a Halloween Medea movie? <laughs> Here's some Get on that. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess my final thought on this is uh man, the eighteen hundreds seem like a real headache. <laughs> <laughs> History <No>. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh the movie is I think Twelve Years a Slave is a better movie. Yeah. For the reasons we said. Yeah. But I was gripped enough by this film to where I, I wasn't sitting there mm. like I certainly didn't regret seeing it. At the least, it's it's worth a matinee. Mm. But if you if you don't see it in theaters, like I don't know if you're really missing much of a theatrical experience going to see this yeah. thing. But I mean, like it's it. If I yeah, if I paid matinee prices to go see this in the theater, I'd have been perfectly mm. satisfied. I, I, I mean, I do feel satisfied. Yeah. I, I think this is a perf- it's a perfectly solid, well intentioned, but just just very flawed movie, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and. The thing is, we got all the trailers for a lot of them, and there was a lot of movies that are very similar to this. And I, I imagine that at least one of those movies will be better than this one. Uh-huh. My, I think my like eye... get out with uh, j- directed by Jordan Peele. Th- that trailer, <laughs> man. That's talk about. I'd never, I'd not seen that trailer yeah, before, but so that really, I didn't know what turns that trailer was making. That that started with something completely different. That's the Stepford Wives if they decided to start making no, black I, I, people I, I, instead. I was, more, I, I was more. <laughs> Thinking um, along the lines of loving with uh, loving with Ruth Nager and um, and Joel, Joel Edgerton. Ed- Edgerton and Michael Shannon. That looks mm-hmm. like it, that looks like it might actually be a stronger movie than this one, and might actually take a little bit of the attention away from this one if it's yeah. released correctly. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got yeah. a few uh, like Oscar season that trailers. One with, that one with Denzel Washington being released. At Fences. Christmas. That looks good. Yeah, fact, it looks yeah. good, but it looks like it's going to be the most depressing Christmas movie of all time. <laughs> we get well, you say that, but we get a lot of like depressing ass movies released what, on Christmas wasn't, here. Wasn't Django and Chain released yes. at Christmas? That yeah. was that. I think so. I think In that the was US, Christmas. Anyway, a lot of Tarantino's are actually like uh, Hateful Eight was out around Christmas last year. Um, mm. But uh, we got yeah, we got uh, hidden figures. Hidden fig. We also got hidden figure. The yeah. Affleck movie that looks really good. Uh, Live by night. In Inferno. The trailer. That, the U.S. trailer for Inferno. That apparently like apparently U.S. audiences don't like to see a movie these days unless they have two thirds of the movie spoiled in exact order. Yeah. <laughs> Inferno does that. Keeping up with the Joneses does that. Honestly, it yeah. looks like Cause, it, it cause looks those, like Get Out does that. Yeah, because those are those are different trailers than the mm. ones that I've seen in the UK. Oh. The international trailers do not spoil the movie. Oh in, no, in you, the exact order Amer- that it happens. American trailers suck. They do they do that all the fucking time. Like Inferno is one of the biggest fucking. Uh, yeah, we, to do that. We, we did that last night because we got the Inferno trailer before Girl on the Train, and we, mm-hmm. you know, well, so I almost don't have to go and see that movie. Now, when I Terminator come back. Genesis, I remember that notoriously did that last. I mean, yeah. not that whatever. That was a bad movie anyway. I imagine but, Birth of Birth of a, the Birth of a Nation trailer does that by by dint of it, of it being I mean, a historical story. I, well, yeah, I mean, it does show the uprising in the trailer. Yeah. Um, that 
uh, Jackie Kennedy movie looked really good. Yeah, that looked like a really interesting movie. Yeah. It, especially since they went out of their way to make it look like a movie that had been shot in the 60s. Yeah, that looked... I hadn't seen that trailer before. That looked yeah. really fucking good. Uh, so, yeah, we got a bunch of the awards season yeah. movies at yeah. the beginning of this. And Get Out. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Inferno's not going to win an Oscar next year? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for sound. <laughs> I doubt even that. Uh, is it time to go see Masterminds? Uh, it is ten past seven. Coming. All right, we but, gotta uh, go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this, this movie. I, I think Final Thoughts. Um, it's it's okay. I think mm-hmm. it's fine. It's it's a big important movie, but yeah. I'm not sure if that necessarily is the same thing as good. <laughs> <laughs> a review you could say about the original Birth of a Nation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, it turns out movies called Birth of a Nation are cursed. <laughs> yeah. All right, Fall of a Nation too. That was the sequel to the original. That's a lost film. <laughs> Probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go see last week's runaway hit uh, Mastermind. It's the other true story movie. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it is a double feature. See it. Take care.